Illinois and Iowa are the top two soybean producers in the United States. In third place sits Minnesota, thanks to a then record crop in 2015 and an even larger output last year. The state's average yield reached 50 bushels an acre for the first time in 2015 and was even better in 2016. Seth Nave is an extension agronomist at the University of Minnesota and focuses heavily on soybeans. We talked with him at a Nebraska Extension Crop Management Conference in Kearney recently about production strategies for soybean growers and whether or not those tactics should change in a tight margin year like 2017. Well, it is a little bit different. We're, you know, certainly watching uh, overall just because of the lower prices in general compared to a few years ago, we're really watching our inputs. And I think the benefit of having that big run up in prices was the fact that farmers were able to look at a lot of things to increase soybean yields. And now I'm basically trying to help determine and help farmers choose things to get rid of and reduce their overall inputs and into their farming operations. Describe some of those inputs and what you might be able to either do without or back off of. Well, I, our research, we did a national study back uh, a few years ago looking at kind of a kitchen sink approach to adding everything onto that soybean crop collectively and then individually. And I would kind of pool things into two groups, these kind of yield enhancing products, those that are marketed to farmers to really increase soybean yields and kind of yield protectants that are kind of our classic pesticides. And our research really indicates that these yield promoting things, these magical products, we really have a hard time finding any value in any of those products at all. The things that provided them, us the most value were real actual pesticides that had activity on specific pests. So seed treatments, uh, fungicide insecticides worked a little bit for us. Uh, foliar fungicides occasionally. Uh, and foliar insecticides was really the big bang for the buck, primarily because they're cheap. Uh, but also they have a big activity when we do have insects. So. Uh, controlling real life pests is really the most critical thing. What impact did you find on yield and also yield to price relationship? Yeah, so the whole study was focused on this kind of kip colors, you know, um, this kind of this 150, at the time, 150 bushel soybean yields. We put $170 an acre of products down and we were able to get four bushels out of it. So not exactly what we had hoped for um, in terms of that kind of kitchen sink approach. Uh, we could increase yields with these multiple products and we, we were getting a little bit from each probably individual one, but the economic returns of these multiple products wasn't there. So again, we come back and look at them individually and it really looks like individually you get down to kind of those insecticide fungicide options. Can you speak to planting population in Minnesota, sure. a state that varies, I have to imagine a lot from north to south? Well, I think even more so than the, the state itself, planting population varies by farmer. And I didn't really, I could never understand this because we did surveys 10, 15 years ago where we saw these seeding rates from 100 to 250,000. We didn't understand why, where this was coming from. But when we, do a, we apply economics to our big data sets on populations, we see that higher planting populations tend to be a little bit more stable for yield. So we get a couple bushels out of planting an extra half a bushel of seed. And when you run the economics on it, the return is basically flat across planting rates from 125 to 185,000. And I think that it's, it's just a good explanation of why again, kind of retrospectively of why farmers are doing what they're doing. Those that have, are more conservative in terms of, of seeding rates, they can get a buy, buy just fine, but they may have a couple acres that are a little bit deficient and they may lose a couple bushels over their whole farm, whereas those that invest more are ensured that they have 100% yield potential across all their acres. So. I used to be really big on pinpointing specific populations and I've just decided that it's, it's just based on what farmers are comfortable with. You do work at Minnesota about soybean quality as well, yes. looking at customers and what they want. Explain to me uh, a little bit of a background on that work. Well, I, we've been doing a survey of the U.S. crop, so a lot of farmers from the area probably send a sample to us every year. We analyze it in our lab and then I take it to Asia in November and, and meet with buyers. and tell them about the new crop of U.S. soybeans. Um, then subsequently, I've been working a lot on, on more specific um, northern and northwestern corn belt issues around quality, where we have tend to have lower protein levels, and also where our soybeans tend to be exported off of the Pacific Northwest into Asia. 
those soybeans tend to be lower in protein and they're discriminated against in the global market. So they're getting a lower price at destination and that tracks all the way back to the farmer. So that's part of our broad basis that we have here is a, is a quality basis. It's hidden, um, but we're, we're definitely penalized at the farm level because of it. So we're trying to educate end users about other intrinsic value within that soybean. Is it enough where we're going to see eventually buyers uh, requesting that suppliers do something differently and therefore farmers actually that do something differently? And that's our ultimate goal, I think, as part of this, the problem with the whole trade is that this quality thing gets a little bit, uh, it's, it's opaque, so it, it disappears from the system and we're, we're pushing these soybeans through Somebody might be capturing value at some stage along the line, but then that's not coming back to the farmer level. So we're trying to give a little bit, provide a little bit more openness all the way through the trade so that we could get the right soybean in the, in the hands of the right end users and that they'll pay more for it and that that will ultimately follow all the way back to the grower. We don't, we're not looking for penalties at the elevator for farmers because of amino acid differences or anything like this, but if we can demonstrate value, maybe we can target certain soybeans from regions to certain markets. And then ultimately, the seed companies are gonna see more value in this too, and start really working for farmers because it's, they've just been breeding for yield so far.